We don't need to do this single-handedly in this room. All we need to do as individuals and as, ev as, as evangelists is to push the health span of each individual out, show people what they can do to live longer and healthier lives while they're waiting for these technologies to be developed. But more importantly, to pull the timeline in, accelerate these technologies, make sure they happen on time for us, the people we love, and 100,000 people in the world who would die every single day. Longevity, escape velocity is something I said burn into your brain because if you can live 15 years, that may be all you need. No guarantee, but it may be all you need, so stay healthy. And we need to do a full court press on low-hanging fruit, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And then at the same time, start building a funding base for long-term projects like nanotechnology and uh, genome reengineering. Now, I've compressed this into what we can do over the next five years. And to take this tiny budget of $2 billion and shrink it down even more, look what we can do for $63 million. See our memetics. Um, we can you know, have that for, uh, very far along. Uh, genomics, molecular genetics, we may not need to put any more money in that. Uh, pristine stem cells. Now, here, here's an example. We're giving people stem cell injections. We're re re regrowing organs with stem cells, and we're taking patients who are typically old and they're sick. And we're taking their own stem cells and we're growing them, and we're get, giving them back to them in bulk. And we're, it's, it's kind of working. It fixes hearts kind of pretty well sometimes. But what you're doing is you're giving a, you know, a 60 or 70 year old patient 60 or 70 year old cells. And not only that, these cells are mutated and now we've blown these things up. We've, we've amplified them, we've given them to them in bulk and think of the consequences of potential cancer. And, I, and it's not effective. You're treating old people with old cells. We can treat old people with their own cells that are pristine, that might be in the same shape they had when they were in their 20s, maybe 30s, but maybe teenagers. And look what's standing between us and being able to demonstrate this. We're, we're going to brainstorm this, and we're going to try to find ways, or we will find ways to overcome those objections. So we have roughly three years, and, a, and a, let's call it a, a risk, a gamble, an investment. I, I think it's very low risk. Of, actually, it's less than $4 million. That is on the outside. So, I mean, we're, millions of people need this stuff. Arresting dementia, like I said, three years and seven million dollars to stop Parkinson's and Alzheimer's in 90% of the patients. Why isn't this happening? We're, it's going to happen because we're going to make it happen. Breaking extracellular crosslinks, we can show how it's done, develop the compounds in two years for six million bucks. AGI, the world changing technology, five years. Most people are projecting 20 years, five years, possibly. And that comes from two different sources. And of course, nanomedicine, which has the big budget and the long-term project, can get started at $500,000 a year for the first two years, a million dollars a year for the next two years, and then double it every year. But if we start out at a million dollars for the first year, we're, we could potentially accelerate the progress by two to three years. If we accelerate, accelerate it by three years, that gives us the potential to save 100 million lives. More lives than Stalin and Mao and Hitler combined, or as many lives as they took combined. This is amazing stuff. So um, these are things we'll talk about. Uh, fundraising strategies, we're going to go through these during our uh, session. Uh, this is really a marketing challenge. This is no longer a scientific challenge. The marketing challenge is to get the message out there so people understand, and which will in turn bring the money, uh, have the money coming in. And uh, one of the challenges, we want to deliver a simple, believable, scientific message to demonstrate the feasibility of the, and the benefits. Uh, so we'll, we'll cover all those this after, late this morning, this afternoon, uh, more challenges. And at the bottom I have, this is not a game. This is very, very, very serious business. This is maybe the most serious undertaking that anyone has 
ever, ever gotten involved with. But we can have fun doing it. And we should. I mean, life should be fun. And it should be fun getting more life, and especially once we have it, that'll even be more fun. But let's have fun with this thing. Um, let's be serious, but let's not take ourselves too seriously. The Manhattan Beach Project is the only concerted effort to pull all the pieces together. We've got a lot of people out there with various companies and technologies and uh, research programs, and they're individually trying to do this and do, do that. Uh, we have come together as a group, not to fund any one company or one science or technology, but to put, in the, put together the mechanism that will enable us to do this for the entire sector. We want to stop aging by 2024, and by that I mean not really necessarily stop it, but that is your uh, longevity escape velocity target. 15 years, keep alive for 15 years and healthy. And then we want to reverse the age reversal capability in humans by 2029. The rest is up to your imagination. And my own, my own, personal, um, my own personal purpose of life is to delay and avoid death. Every natural life form fights for it. It's observable.